Hello everybody. I have been having difficulty getting in here to do lives. Um, so I just wanted to jump in here today and um, share with you a couple things. This is a, keeps coming up in my world and in my dreams in fact, which I'm going to share with you a little bit here. So it's important, I think, for all of us because it keeps coming up. And um, so let me tell you about a little bit about this dream that I had. Um, it's just a short little uh, piece. But I had a dream about number 45. And we were, um, we knew each other personally in this dream and we were having this conversation. And I only actually, at this point in time, I only actually remember this part of the conversation because it stood out to me uh, very clearly. And um, what he said to me was, is that um, I had this building project and I put this particular person in, in to, over, to oversee it and we both knew who he was talking about. Um, and this guy also was a Christian, which I think is, is key. And um, because of this person who he put in charge of this building project of his, he said to me that he had had no project in this, or no progress in this building project for, um, for two years. Basically, the whole thing was at a standstill. So, at first I didn't take any thought of that, but as I went over the dream later, I realized that it was very significant. Um, and so it made me think about that for my own life, for all of you, that um, who do we have in our world that is um, holding us back in our building projects or our purpose, so to speak? So that is what our building project is, is our purpose, the, the race that we're supposed to be running that God has for each of us. Who are those people that are holding us back? I, let's call them assassins. The, and and they're, Satan uses people, things, um, to keep us out of the will of God for each of us. And um, let's start with talking about Christians. They, um, and this can be the most destructive out of all of them because it's the most, it's the hardest to wrap your mind around is these people um, who are trying to get you out of God's will. And Satan, Satan is actually, they've allowed Satan to use them as this assassin against you. And it can be in multiple different ways. It can be... Um, you know, a Jezebel who tries to completely get you removed out of the, the will of God that you're already in, 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 very, in various ways. It can be, um, well, they speak a word over you and, and, or say something to you to confuse you, to make you think you're doing something wrong, to make you... Um, lose confidence in yourself and lose confidence in the in, pat, in the path that God gave you and make you question yourself and you know say things or do things against you to completely get you out of the path to make you stop completely I'm sure that um, you've had these people that are that have been in your path or they just or another thing that can happen is um, it make it may seem very innocent but they ask you to do something completely different that is not in God's will for you at all. And now you have got yourself stuck in by giving you word to do something else that you shouldn't be doing. It's not for you. It's you said yes to something which you said it should have said no to, um, which is a project building killer. <laughs> so when you have these things, you can't just immediately just, it may look like it's this shiny thing over here, but you can't just jump into it. You have to, Take it to God in prayer. Make sure that it is part of what you're supposed to be doing. And if it is not, then you don't be a people pleaser. Be a God pleaser. Feel free to say no. You know, that can be your most powerful tool. No. Um, and that will keep you in the uh, path that you're supposed to be on. Um, and there's some of these people that you need to completely remove out of your life. This is another thing that you have to do. You need to put boundaries in. You have to uh, 
to know when these assassins, who these people are, and to become uh, spiritually discerning so that you just remove those people, that this, is ha this has to be done. There are wolves in the sheepfold all day long, and you have to be able to start learning who these people are. Now, it's not always Christians, of course. There's everyone else, anyone else that's in the world that can get you out of your building project. Um, you know, it can be the environment in you're in, the toxic environment that you're in, that you're allowing around you. This toxic environment can cause you depression, can cause you anxiety, can make you ill because of the evil that these people have that are around you, that you allow to remain in your circle. Um, sometimes you just have to hand those people to God and remove yourself from that situation until that situation is resolved, if it ever is. But God can do amazing things. Um, there is also how you're spending your time. Are you spending your time in such a way that you can never accomplish anything and never get your building pro pro uh, project accomplished? Are you, what are you feeding your mind? What is it that you're putting in your mind that is keeping, you know, if you're feeding yourself the wrong things, you're focusing on the wrong things. It, I've said this before, garbage in, garbage out. What you're putting in is exactly what's going to come out. Um, what you're feeding your body. You can make yourself ill because you aren't giving your temple the right nutrients. You don't exercise. There's all of these different um, variables that, and some of them a lot of times are all working hand in hand, that keep you out of the race that God has for you. And this is very important. This is a, this time now that we're in, you know, God needs his warriors more, more now than ever. And I, you know, I would be worried that maybe he would pass us by if, you know, um, we're just not, we're not getting on the, putting our foot on the starting line and we're, and we're just stepping out in faith and, and doing God's will for us and removing, putting boundaries in place, cleaning up our own messes so that we can run our race well. Um, so there is also this verse that, uh, these verses in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, that I um, was reading after I had this dream, which I thought was very appropriate, and it goes right in with this. And this is Paul talking here, and he says, um, 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through about 15, I'm going to read here, but it says, for, for we are laborers together with God. Um, so we're co-laboring with him. It's, it's not all him. We're working together in tandem um, when, we, when we allow him to work with us, when we take his yoke um, and we work together in his will, his way, his strategy. Um, and according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, Paul talking, as a wise master builder, he calls himself a wise master builder. Can we call ourselves the same thing? Are we um, wise master builders? Are we uh, wise art architects of the race that God has placed in front of us? Have we prepared ourselves? Have we um, put the right materials in our minds, you know, in our bodies, done all of the things and continue to do all of the things, get the wrong people out, bring the right people in, the right mentors into our lives, the right instructors into our lives, the right teachers into our lives, the right friends into our lives that we share the right things with and not the, um, that we can trust, that are going to help us and support us in this race that God has for each of us. We have to be certain of that so that we can be this wise master builder. Um, and he says here, he has laid the foundation and another builds thereon, but let every man take heed how he builds thereon. So not only is he saying he's a wise master builder and he's laid the foundation, he's saying that you have to remember that um, what you build 
should be able to stand the test of time because there are going to be other builders who come behind you and going to add to what you, that firm foundation that you have that you have already set. Um, so, and what is that foundation for? That no foundation that is laid that read it in King James for other foundation can no man lay can lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. So that is what our foundation is. We start with him. It is our firm foundation. And now if any man builds upon this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day will declare it and it will be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what kind of work it is. So if any man's work abides when he has built thereon, he will rece receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself shall barely be saved, yet so as fire, but by fire. So what how what are the building materials that are using are you using is your building project going to stand firm and when you know the fire comes is it going to stand that test or is it just going to be destroyed um so another thing that you should be paying attention to what are the materials i'm using am i prepared am i working with are, am I working in tandem, hand in hand with Christ, or am I letting the world get mixed in there and, and what I'm building is of no worth? It's worthless and will be destroyed, like the chaff is burned up. Is your building project an unshakable building project? Who are you working for? Are you building your kingdom or are you building his? There's a lot of things that go into it. And God wants you to succeed more than anybody else. Start with him as the foundation. <laughs> Get rid of the uh, toxic people, toxic environments, toxic ways that you're spending your time, um, feeding yourself, your mind, your body, your soul. And ask God to help you in your master building. And you will succeed. And I'm right there with you, my warrior sisters. You guys have a great Wednesday, and I'll see you again soon.